Uh, number 14 is Felix Mendelssohn. Felix Mendelssohn is born in uh, Hamburg, February 3rd, 1809. He, was, he comes from a Jewish family, but he's baptized as a Lutheran in 1860. So pretty much his whole life he's a Lutheran. However, he was discriminated against most of his life because everybody considered him a Jew. But he, he actually wasn't he was a Lutheran. Uh, he wrote his first symphony in 1824, so he would have been all of, what, 15 years old? Do I have that right? 11? 15 years old, he wrote his first symphony. 1829, in Berlin, Mendelssohn arranges and conducts the first performance of Bach St. Matthew Passion since 1750. This is generally considered to be the beginning of the Bach revival. <coughs> when Bach died, uh, it was the end of the Baroque era, and everyone promptly forgot about it. Bach's uh, music was no longer performed after he died. He was, he was a forgotten artist. <coughs> it was Felix Mendelssohn that brought him back from oblivion. And it was Felix Mendelssohn who was the first one who uh, started that Bach revival in the 19th century. 1833, he was appointed a musical director in Dusseldorf. <laughs> And he directed a performance of Handel's oratorial, Israel and Egypt. This caused a rebirth of interest in Handel in Germany. 1836, in Leipzig, the first performance of the oratorial, St. Paul, uh, which he wrote. 1837, he marries Cecile Charlotte Sophie Jean Renault. They would have five children together. 1839, in Leipzig, Mendelssohn directs Franz Schubert's Ninth Symphony causing a revival of interest in Schubert's works. 1843, Mendelssohn founds the Leipzig Conservatory, which is still in existence today. 1846, in Birmingham, England, the first performance of his oratorial Elijah, which is the, uh, the work he is most known for today. November 4, 1847, he dies at age 38 in Leipzig of a stroke. And in the 20th century, if we're going to pick a single reason why Mendelssohn belongs on this list, his works were banned by Adolf Hitler. I can't think of a greater reason to include him on our list as one of the great influences of Christian music. But he was discriminated because he was born a Jew and became a Christian? Yes. How do people who do that reconcile Peter, Paul, Matthew, yeah, Paul, all the apostles John. were Jews. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, some of you may have heard that him refer to as Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi. Well, it, he dropped the Mendelssohn part because it sounded Jewish. And he kind of made up this name Bartholdi. And uh, that's how he referred to himself most of his life. Um, as I said, he was baptized as a Lutheran in 1816. Uh, although discriminated against most of his life because of his uh, Jewish roots, he's one of the most finest and most prolific composers of Christian and sacred music ever. He's uh, most famous for his oratorial, St. Paul and Elijah. A third oratorial, Christus, was never uh, finished. He also wrote a number of choral cantatas and psalms. Today he's most uh, famous for Elijah, uh, the big hit from Elijah is He Watching Over Israel, which uh, we may have a chance to, to play here in a moment. He also wrote the tune used with Charles Wesley's Hark the Herald Angels Sing. So if you look up in your, your hymnal under Hark the Herald Angels, it will say uh, Mendelssohn on one side, it will say uh, uh, Charles Wesley on the other. Later in life, he had a close association with renowned soprano Jenny Lynn. I'll say that again. Later in his life, he had a close association, are we getting it, with uh, uh, renowned soprano Jenny Lynn. He may have asked her to elope with him in 1847. He wrote the soprano solo on Elijah for which he did not perform until after his death. Now, he was discriminated against, and he did uh, face some difficulties. So on this particular issue, that's his wife. She's pretty. Very attractive. Jenny Lynn was considered one of the great beauties of his age. So uh, in some areas he was doing all right. I wouldn't feel too sorry. 
little too fast for tonight. Now, if you could see the slide. Oh, it is. Uh, so it, those were the two women in his life. And uh, I would say both of them were pretty attractive.